Economies of scope are efficiencies formed by variety, not volume. The latter concept is economies of scale. One, for example, many corporate diversification plans assume that economies of scope will be achieved. Economics, the term and the concepts development are attributed to economists John C. Panzer and Robert D. Willig, 1977, 1981, 3, 4. Whereas economies of scale for a firm involve reductions in the average cost cost per unit arising from increasing the scale of production for a single product type, economies of scope involve lowering average cost by producing more types of products. Economies of scope make product diversification efficient if they are based on the common and recurrent use of proprietary know-how or on an indivisible physical asset 5 for example. As the number of products promoted is increased, more people can be reached per unit of money spent. At some point, however, additional advertising expenditure on new products may become less effective an example of diseconomies of scope. Related examples include distribution of different types of products, product bundling, product lining, and family branding. Unlike economies of scale, which can be reasonably be expected to plateau into an efficient state, that will then deliver high margin revenues for a period, economies of scope may never reach that plateau at all. As Venkatesh Rayo of Ribbon Farm explains it, you may never get to a point where you can claim you have right-sized and right-shaped the business, but you have to keep trying. In fact, managing the ongoing scope learning process is the essential activity in business strategy. If you ever think you've right-sized slash right-shaped for the steady state, that's when you are most vulnerable to attacks.